Well, I see you found your way back just in time too, because we're gonna do another episode of JP Gun Vault. Come on in. Once again, thanks for stopping by. It's always good to have you. I think we're up to episode number six of the JP Gun Vault. Well, if you remember the last episode, I showed you this rifle. This was my 18-inch uh, ultralight that I uh, was shooting uh, in three-gun competition for quite a while. I shot it at SOF. And uh, I was talking a little bit about the development of optics in the uh, the uh, inclusion of optics at SOF, and we were talking about the, the ACOG. So I'm gonna talk about optics, in particular this optic, and uh, really a thought process I went down with this, with this scope. Everybody was shooting uh, either the uh, TA-01, which is the four, power, four by 32 ACOG, or the, uh, the 3.5, the uh, 3.5 power. I, I preferred this one. I like the little bit more magnification. And uh, it's kind of interesting to note that all scopes are really a compromise between three competing qualities, magnification, eye relief, and field of view. This really represents a really unique and interesting compromise between those three things because what they've tried to give you here is the widest possible field of view at the highest magnification and what you sacrifice is eye relief. So the eye box of this scope is very short. Some people find that really difficult to live with. I think once you get used to it and you get your stock properly set up, it's a piece of cake. And the advantages of it are significant because this is a true combat scope. I mean, this thing is bulletproof. It's made from a forging, like the receivers of a standard AR type rifle. So very, very robust and this can take some real punishment that commercial grade scopes just can't. And the field of view gives you situational awareness. And then of course, whether you're in a combat situation or whether you're at, at a three gun match where you've got a wide variety of targets out there and you're indexing between them, well, that wide field of view prevents you from forgetting about a target. Believe me, for a while there, I was shooting a uh, uh, Weaver is two to 10 or something like that. I forget, but I think it was a scope about that magnification. And of course, I, I like that 10 power for those long distance targets, but I ended up bypassing targets. And that's because the, sc the scope had just too small a field of view and I would lose those things. Well, when I started to shoot this scope, what, one of the things that dawned on me that resolution was at least as important and almost equal in value to magnification. So if you get, you could have a four power scope that only, only four power, but have crystal clear high resolution glass like this thing does, and you'd be amazed at how precise you can be at distance when you got high resolution. All right, back to really the story here, is that Trigicon, of course, put a ballistic reticle in these things. And that, that ballistic reticle was designed around M93 uh, ammunition, uh, 55 grain ball at sea level. Well, let's face it, no serious competitive shooter <clears throat> was shooting 55 grain ball ammo, certainly at long range targets. They were shooting 69s or 77s when they finally came out. And so they wanted to shoot bullets that were, of course, ballistically far superior. And guess what? Uh, none of these matches were occurring at sea level. They were all at higher atmosphere. The SOF at Las Vegas, we happened to be at about 2,500 feet there. Uh, so I started looking at, I started pouring over the, uh, the ballistic tables and atmospheric density charts. And I thought to myself, well, really, we needed to have a, a reticle that was tuned for what we did with these scopes. Because 
We were all trying to load ammunition, literally, that fit the reticle instead of the other way around, making the scope fit the ammunition we wanted to use. So I came up with this load with a 50 grain nozzle ballistic tip. And uh, at the velocity I shot that load, it was a fairly close match to the military grade reticle. The other thing is, of course, the military reticle was designed for arranging off of a torso. It was, uh, it had an upside down Christmas tree in it so that you could place that line across the torso and get an approximate distance. Well, we weren't, you know, intending to shoot these for that purpose. We were, we were shooting targets. We were shooting steel at distance. What we wanted was wind. That's what I wanted. So after pouring over this for a long time, I came up with a ballistic reticle that was uh, using uh, 2,000 feet atmospheric density and a bullet with a BC of a mid-3. And then I put 10 miles of wind at the tips of the line so it kind of looked like a right side up Christmas tree. And uh, Trigicon said that, yeah, they would do this reticle for me. I just had to order 50 scopes, which of course was a pretty darn significant investment for me at the time. So I was a little bit worried about it. But we got the first prototype scopes in. And I committed to do it. And I took the very first one, slapped it on my rifle. I laid a 200 yard, because it was based, my, my reticle was based on a 200 yard zero, and I laid that zero on it. And then it was a six inch plate at 400 yards off uh, on a, uh, an adjacent range that I could access down this line of fire. And I proceeded to put a round on that six inch plate off the 400 yard line, and I said, yes. And I knew <laughs> that this reticle was spot on. So really, whether you were shooting the 77s or the 69s, that reticle really was a great representation of the ballistics of the loads that people wanted to shoot at the time. So I can't say enough good about this. Uh, obviously, the, the scope has fallen out of popularity because now the thing, uh, this, this type of optics du, du jour is the one to something or other, you know, like this. It, at one power, uh, uh, it, it's actually this one happens to be a one to eight. And they keep improving on this, this whole concept. Now they got one to tens. And of course, at one power, uh, you've got, on a really good one, like the Zorowski, you've got what I would call one power transparency, where the scope almost literally disappears, where it looks like a true non-magnified dot sight. And so really, there again, a tremendously versatile piece of glass. But who's kidding who? These things are not as robust as a Trigicon ACOG. So there's a lot to be said for this, and if you can live with a straight power scope and your 45 degree offset iron for your close range, this is still something worth considering. So just a, a perspective of how my thought process has worked over the years, shooting in competition, realizing like, okay, the optic is at least as important as the rifle, and realizing that you had to milk the most uh, utility out of the glass to get the really the full potential out of the rifle also. I hope you got something out of that. I enjoyed talking to you, so look forward to seeing you in the next episode.